Now in the last video, we talked about monsters and kind of getting enemies for your, for your party to fight and such. And this time we're going to talk about how do you display combat. Kind of, you know, you can, we're going to talk about mostly a matter of board combat, you know, with miniatures and a game board of some kind versus theater of the mind. And, you know, we'll talk about pros and cons and such. Um, the first thing we'll discuss is we will discuss kind of the board because, um, and this is, I think, one of my harder topics because when I first was getting into D&D &D, when I first was learning and I would watch videos about this, you know, I would see stuff about miniatures and terrain and boards and how to, you know, how to get a nice good, like, you know, dis display, something that I could show the, my players what combat was looking like. And it was very uh, difficult for me because I wanted to immediately rush out and buy all the miniatures and buy all these terrain packs and stuff like that, and, you know, make this really cool stuff and, you know, but, you know, doing so really fast would have cost me, you know, like hundreds of dollars. But instead, I found actually, I think, a cheaper solution. You know, you can go and you can buy, like, you know, Wizards of the Coast and, you know, and other kind of company that released official D&D products. You have, like, you know, you can buy terrain packs and they give you, like, these little kind of plastic, kind of plastic cardboard tiles that have stuff on them. Or you can buy, um, you know, you, there's all sorts of options. I'm not even going to go into them. But the two I'm going to kind of advocate is I'm going to say, well, you, what I do is personally is I got a whiteboard. I got a giant whiteboard. It's about three foot by four foot. And I just get markers and then I draw the map on that. And the reason I advocate this is because with, instead of with, when you get these tiles and stuff like that, you're forced to what, make whatever you can with these tiles. But by having a board, a whiteboard, I can draw whatever. I can draw, you know, them on them next to a seashore. I can draw them in the middle of a forest. I can draw them in the streets. I can draw them in the dungeon. I can draw whatever I need. And it works actually quite well, I think. And, you know, and, and yes, it's a bit of a hassle to sometimes have to carry the whiteboard. Because, you know, it's three feet by four foot. It's a pretty big thing. It doesn't weigh a lot, but it is kind of hefty. And, you know, it means I... Since I drive, I have a little. Since I have a little pickup truck, I drive. You know, it works great because if I go somewhere to play TNT, I can bring the board with me, and I just throw it in the back of the truck, and it works. But it does make it a little more of a hassle. Now there is a second option that kind of is very similar to the board, but isn't quite as much of a hassle to to bring, and that's uh, Chessex makes, and there are other companies as well. But they make basically fold up uh, kind of leathery mats, and they have you know. A one square, a one inch by one inch square grid that's usually about three feet by three feet. Uh, it's pretty nice. I mean, they make stuff for like, you know, chessboards, but they also make these grids, and you can do basically the same thing. You get a dry erase marker, and then you can draw out stuff on it, and it already has the one inch by one inch grid, which is what we use in D&D. And that's actually really nice, and I've used one once or twice before, and I thought it was cool. The one thing is that eventually it does kind of stain a little bit, so over time, it does kind of wear away, but, you know, the thing's only like 15, 20 bucks, so it's not a bad deal. And since it is really kind of a leathery material, you can, it rolls up, and it's a lot lighter. So it's a lot easier to carry that one. And in many ways, I kind of wish I had that, but I like my board personally better because it gives me a much greater freedom, and it's not going to stain quite the same way. But it's up to your opinion. If you need to be really mobile, I was just getting the Chess X or any of these kind of roll-up uh, grid mats. Or if you... You know, like me, I usually play at my home, so therefore I can just have my board. I just got to pull it out of my room. It's just whatever kind of suits your style best. Now, part two for this, we're going to talk about miniatures. Well, I should say, yeah, kind of part two of part one. We're going to, we're talking about like, you know, boards and miniatures and getting, and what, this is you talk about getting stuff, and here's part two is miniature. Having miniatures is nice, naturally, because then you can kind of visualize what a character looks like, you know? And it's nice because then you can kind of point to, oh yeah, this creature, it moves here to attack, uh, you know, Angela, instead of, you know, kind of then you say, wait, which one is the one, or instead of like in Theater of Mind, you do have to kind of think, wait, okay, so this one goes here and attacks this. Um, and it allows you to kind of be a little more specific. It allows players to kind of think, okay, we want to move around so we can get flanking, or you might say, okay, I need to position myself here so I can kind of spray all of these. There's a lot of advantages to having miniatures and the board and everything, and that's why I do play with it now. Um, miniatures are not the cheapest thing ever. I usually buy, like, you know, the official, like, Wizards of the Coast booster packs. Um, you know, they're basically, like, 
four bucks a miniature. There's a lot of other options. You can go online, go like on eBay or Amazon, and like, you know, type in like, you know, lots of pre-painted miniatures and it'll give you stuff or you can, and the hard part is I think you'd have to, when you buy, buy these miniatures, you have to accept the fact that you're usually gonna have to pay two or three or four, two to four bucks for a miniature. Now, if you wanna get a really specific one or if you wanna get a really big one solo, um, you're probably gonna have to pay even more. It depends on how much you're going to invest on a miniature. This is why I kind of pay pay for the booster packs because then I know exactly more or less what I'm getting. And yeah, it's not the best value, but it works. And you know, you can go online even order them and they're cheaper there, but... Now, if you don't have miniatures right at the back or one other thing you can do is you can do all sorts of other things to, to make the monsters. You know, for... I had this idea for a while, especially after the after our heroes killed Fritzless, I thought, you know, perhaps one thing I would do is make have them make their own miniatures, but basically just drawing out their characters. I would say, hey, take a one inch by two inch little kind of piece of paper, and I want you to draw and your character on it. How do you envision your character? And then, you know, a lot of game boards, you know, stuff like, you know, Monopoly and kind of those kind of board games have like, you know, they'll have like the little cardboard cutout things, you know, you can get the leg out the little plastic stands. I mean, there's also a way you could then figure out a way to kind of create a little stand. That way, you know, if you have the players do it on like, you know, construction paper or cardstock of some kind, you know, it'll stand up on its own. So you just got to slip it into this, your little plastic stand and it and boom, they have their own miniature. And I actually think that'd be a really cool idea and I still kind of think I ought to do it at some point. Of course, there are also other ways you can do miniatures. You know, you could, I know there's an, there's an, uh, an infamous way I've heard, like, you know, what you do is you just use like Skittles or M&Ms, you know, to kind of visualize monsters and stuff like that. You know, you might have an army of orcs and you basically just pop it a bag of Skittles and you just put it out on the table and you just say, hey, here are the orcs. And then the fun part is when the party, when someone then kills an orc, for instance, you can eat the Skittle. You know, there's fun stuff like that. Or, you know, at one point my, the party was fighting a couple elementals. So I got like, you know, I was a couple of water elementals and actually this one was Esther's idea, but I got a little plastic cup of water and filled some water in it and put it on the table and I, then I had the idea, I went out and got a rock and I put it on the table to show my earth elemental. You know, you can, you, you can, you have some ideas and here's some different, there was some different things you can kind of do that. Um, Lego, you can do, there was a while where we uh, actually used Lego figures um, for a dungeon. And especially because Lego figures, because Lego, again, if you do a 4x4 four four stud uh, with Legos, you get the 1 inch by 1 inch. And so, you know, you can put your little figure, you can customize your minifigure, Lego minifigure. They can put it on a 4x4 four four piece of, uh, like, you know, Legos, and then you stick that on the grid, and it works perfectly. And, you know, you could probably come up with about, like, a thousand different ideas that I didn't even mention on how to do it. But, and again, it's all a little bit up to your preference. So now we talked about like you know having bo using a board and having a miniatures and stuff like that and you know being able to do that and then there's also theater of the mind and that's simply just saying no board no miniatures you just sit at a table you all just kind of envision what it looks like in your head and while it's great for mobility like you know you can be anywhere and as long as you got your players you can do theater of the mind and for a longest while, for a long time we did use theater of the mind you know in some of the early sessions for instance we were playing it you know on the way to band competitions and stuff like that. And so we didn't have really the, the, we couldn't bring, you know, a mat and miniatures and stuff like that on the bus. So we just used theater of the mind and it works and it works pretty well. It, it, there's, it can work really well. And there's something to it because then it, there's a little, you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about quite the same way of, okay, exact. Is it really 30 feet? It might be 40 feet. We probably get there. Technically there is some flexibility that allows for it. But one of the things I think it lacks though is the ability to really kind of thinking about, okay, where do I want to put myself? For instance, you have to kind of consciously think a little more like, okay, I want to go around this guy and get flanking on the same dude that, you know, Barry is fighting. And, you know, it's times, you know, where someone might have a, have a ranged attack, something that like uh, an area attack, like for instance, a, a, a cone spell, you know, it's a lot harder for them to kind of say, okay, I want to angle myself so I can catch all these people in it, but not catch my guys in it. It, it does lose some ability to, to get very specific and really kind of be able to plan out some cool stuff. I think by having a board and stuff, you can get some really kind of decisive tactical thinking going on that you can't really get when you don't have a board. But again, theater of the mind is great for mobility. It's free, which I think is, I think I advocate that all starting DMs start off with theater of the mind. 
in part because then that's one less thing you have to worry about. And I think when you're once, and I advocate, of course, you know, hey, you can buy, for instance, a whiteboard or the chess X boards for about 20. I think, I think my whiteboard cost me like 30 bucks. Um, but, you know, you can get chess X for like, you know, 20 bucks. Miniatures, again, come in like, you know, depends on how many you buy at a time. But again, they're about two, two to four dollars per miniature. And, you know, I've bought mine over the time. I've got, you know, however many at this point. I think it's over 100 miniatures, I think, at this point. But I've bought them over the course of a year. And I know that sounds like a lot. Well, okay, maybe it's not actually 100, but maybe about 50 or so. I bought quite, I have, I have a nice good selection at this point. But again, I've bought that over the course of years and such. Some of them were actually like, you know, Christmas gifts that I kind of said, hey, why don't you, why don't you guys just get me some miniatures? Because again, that's something I'll, I'll use. And I, I think that it's important that if you, when you do start getting miniatures, which I think it's in many ways good that you do eventually, buy them slowly over time. And as you kind of start getting that collection going, I would suggest just use theater of the mind. I think it's the best. It's simple. It's easier. Yeah, you kind of have to think about it in your head, but I think it's you just need to not worry so much. So that's all we're going to talk about for this video. Uh, we might do one more kind of on combat, and I'll just do kind of just simply how I run combat, you know, with initiative and keeping track of hit points and all that kind of stuff. Um, until then, guys, thank you for watching, and as always, stay cool.